Welcome once again to the Rugby Tipsters Six Nations preview. As we had last week, John Callard has kindly agreed to join mm -hmm. us, the former England coach and player. And John was uh, pretty insightful in predicting what would happen in round one, whether his crystal ball will work again in round two, <laughs> we'll wait and see. But uh, just looking back on the opening weekend, John, there's always so many talking points, isn't there, in a, a Six Nations weekend? And, and that was no different. Oh, fabulous. Um... My heart for England, well, it's happened, it's gone. There's nothing we can do about it now. And my pleas for Scotland and Stuart Hogg, in particular, yes, Stuart Hogg, because he's had some monumental hiccups in the tournament last year. How he responded and how he played this year was absolutely brilliant. We said Hamus Watson was, Watson was going to be a big factor for Scotland. He was. Tale of two players, Ollie Lawrence, Cameron Redpath. Redpath straight into the game from Scotland's point of view, 60 minutes before Ollie Lawrence, Ollie Lawrence got a touch on the ball. So a tale of two players there. Ireland, oh, they lost a man early down, galvanised the Irish, came back and were within a kick of winning that game. And it wasn't Billy Burns' kick. Let me tell you, it wasn't Billy Burns' kick that I say they were in a win in that game. It was the touch finder that uh, Johnny Sexton had from a penalty going to touch down the other side, 65 minutes. And I think if they got in there, Ireland would have just turned the screw and just gone away from there. So poor old Billy, one of our own from the pathway, as was Johnny Williams and Nick Tompkins. Some great talking points there. Um, yeah, well done to Scotland, France. Well, well, we'll talk about them in a minute. Yeah, so let's kick off with uh, England, Italy. Surely they can bounce back with a much better performance and a handsome victory. I think so. I think it will be a handsome victory. Two, two ways you can go with this team. You can say, right, you lot, you've had your chance and chuck them out. Or you can say, listen, we'll be the better off for playing another game together. I think probably stick them together and play another game together. We talked about the Saracens factor last week. Sadly, those boys were lacking. And we knew they were going to be lacking because match intensity, test level rugby takes you to another level. And we just found a little bit wanting. I don't think England will concede the penalties they conceded last week. Uh, but by saying that, though, credit to Scotland. They exploited England. And I think England, uh, sorry, Italy will be a handful. They had their moments against France. They had, what, 57% possession, 59% territory, or the other way around thereabouts. It shows they can get lots of ball and they can play in the right areas. For Italy, they need to be a little bit more clinical when they get into that 22-metre zone. If they can get in there and come away with points, they'll be a handful. Yeah, I've had a good look at the stats, and actually they weren't far off making 1,000 metres with ball in hand, which is the second best from round one. But I think the telling thing for me was that they missed a quarter of their tackles and against a big, powerful side like England, they can't afford to do that. No, not at all. Not at all. I think, yeah, you're right. Nearly a quarter, nearly a third of their tackles they missed are from first up tackles. And I just think that it just France were just going through the gears. They played, the, they played them at the drive, just sucked them in a little bit and then went wide. And the other thing that you've got to remember from the stats as well, Italy made seven line breaks. So did France make seven line breaks. They were equal in that, in that respect. The difference was that France turned up in numbers and converted their opportunities. So we think it's going to be a big win. What are we looking at? Around 35, 40 points or more than that? Uh, I think England will score, will score between 35 and 40 points. But like Italy on the weekend, they have their moments. They scored a lovely try with a little chip over the top. But they'll have their moments. And I think they're worth at least 20 points. I really do. Between 15 and 20 points scoring themselves. So something like a 35, 40 points, the 20, 35, 15, maybe a 20 point. The second game features sides that were in winning form in round one, Scotland versus Wales. But of the two, Scotland put in the much better performance, didn't they? Yes, they did. Uh, they had much more territory. They were much more composed. Um, but having said that, Wales, what, lived off 37 or 39 percent possession? OK, absolutely nothing to play with and took their two opportunities beautifully well. George North sniped down the side and, um, and I'm pleased for Lewis Brizamit. What a finish that was. Lit up the whole weekend with a try like that. Someone who's making his Six Nations debut as well. That's brilliant. So I think Scotland will be buoyed uh, from their performance in England. I'm not sure if they'll take their foot off the gas and say that's it. I hope that's our season now. I hope not. I hope they go on. Uh, I think Wales, though, if you look at the, the damage that they had to take in that game, the, the injuries in particular, I think that may affect them and their ability to put up a good performance. I think they will, I think they will come out fighting, 
but I think Scotland should be too good by two scores. I suppose losing Dan Lydia obviously is a blow because he was in form for Ospreys, but if you were to look at one area where they could perhaps ship an injury, it would be the back row because James Botham did pretty well in the autumn. He was left out of the squad. And Josh Navidi, I mean, he's a, he's a beast, isn't he? He came on with superb around the breakdown and his, and his linking play. That one little deft touch, he flicked away with the ball to get it away, just showed skill and composure. I think you're right in that area, but Scotland are strong in that area. We didn't even talk about this guy last week who came on and made an impact. Gary Graham for, for Scotland. I think he will be a big impact for them as well. A big impact player. When the game starts, it starts stretching and it opens up a little bit. So what's your predicted winning margin for Scotland? Well, I think I've got a score of something around 24-12 to Scotland. And I just think where the Scots will be slightly a little bit better than where Ireland were in this area, and England in particular, is their, their ability off kick returns. I thought Stuart Hogg and Maitland were fantastic at reading the opportunity to say, right, we're not going to kick this back. We've seen space and we're going to run. They played heads up and created a lot of damage. And I think that's where they might have the edge. If Wales want to kick loose and kick long to them, I think their selection of kick return policy will bring them dividends. And then uh, wrapping up proceedings, a very interesting game on paper. A tough one to call, really. Uh, France make the trip over to Dublin for their second consecutive away match in the Six Nations already. Ireland picked up a few knocks themselves, talking of injuries. Yeah, they did. And obviously the red card didn't, ha didn't help. You know, um, there's a lot of conjecture about the red card. Wayne Barnes is one of the best is the best. Now Nigel Owens is retired, he's one of the best officials in world rugby. And his protocol, his process, it was clear, it was obvious. Unfortunately, years gone by, people will say that's a rugby collision and that happens. That's changed, you know, unfortunately. Arm, shoulder, head, you know, there's no nothing. But having said that, the Irish were brilliant. They galvanised, they came back. They got themselves 13-6 ahead and were looking very, very strong. But eventually, that extra man was going to tell because in defence, they were stretched when Zamet scored and when George North, uh, George North scored, they didn't cover those short sides. But also in attack, when they went to wide, wide game late on, that, that one number less makes it hard to break down the sides, even though Ireland did do it well. Um, but yes, I think that was the big factor in, in, in that game. Robbie Henshaw had a cracking game for Ireland and was suddenly, by the commentators, being talked about as a Lions uh, potential. Um, that's going to be an interesting battle in midfield, but wh where do you think the game will be won and lost? Um, I think the discipline up front. I think the Irish will very much pile in to France, if, if you want to use that expression. I don't mean that in a nasty sense. I mean being aggressive, being on the front foot, asking questions of the French. And if we remember the French in the tournament last year at Scotland, Scotland piled into them. They produced a, a, um, a point of indiscretion by the French forward. That reduced the numbers. And then from there, Scotland grew into the game. I think Ireland, if they do that, uh, and they're a bit more selective with their kick returns, and have a go, uh, have a go at uh, France and try and move them around a little bit, I think that could bring them joy. If you're just going to kick straight down the French fro throats, uh, as we saw Italy do on the weekend, um, in particular, you know, Doulan and Teddy Thomas uh, and, and um, Villeneuve, is it? Villeneuve, Villeneuve, Villeneuve the, the winger, was just fantastic. And I think that that is going to be there. But again, we talk about all these stats and we talk about all the things that go into the game, you know, maybe the coach has done this and that and that. What we don't really measure is the human emotion of it. You know, uh, France last week, I thought against Italy, weren't pushed or weren't tried. And they were just in third gear. You know, they were just going through the gears, stuck in third gear, and it was an easy game for them. This weekend, we will see the emotion and the passion of the French side come to the fore. If that comes out, then I would say they've got the edge on that performance. So your hunch, Le Bleu by a score? Oh, as, as close as last week as flicking a coin which way it could go. But if you were to say, if, if France come out with that passion and that human emotion and they take the game to Ireland and, and, and combat that Ireland sort of ferocity early on, I, I would dare say, yeah, France, just by a, one whisker. Great. Thanks a lot, JC. Perfect. Let's hope, let's hope our predictions are, are bang on for people. 
<laughs> well, let's hope like last week we have uh, another amazing weekend of, of rugby where there are some great talking points. Cheers, John. 